Hello, Taylor from Doom to Fail. Today we're re-releasing episode 19, part 2, on Ken McElroy. McElroy. Um, he was the town bully, all-around jerk to humans and animals alike, and one day they had enough and someone shot him, but the whole town won't tell who. So, um, yeah, don't be a jerk. I mean, don't kill people, but also don't be a jerk. Um, lots of lessons in this one. So um, if you have any questions or ideas, we're at doomedafellapod at gmail.com. We're on spring break, so we are re-releasing some of our past episodes. Hope you enjoy. Thanks. In the matter of the people of the state of California versus Orenthal James Simpson, case number BA09. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Side of the equation. So we're gonna we're gonna discuss AI again in this Ooh. little bit. So I thought I'd do today's episode on a topic kind of similar to last week which touched on a true crime theme that seems kind of rare, which is crimes and people that we're glad things ha- bad things happened to. Kind of like last week. Yeah, okay. With, that makes sense. with March. Yeah. So I kind of discussed this too, like where, you know, where people have a tendency to aggrandize the dead and say that there are, um, people are amazing once they die, when we all know that that's just not always true. Yeah. And there are some cases where people are just like tickled pink that somebody was killed. <laughs> and thinking that they got their just desserts. So I will say that these stories are kind of tough to find because very few people are eager to celebrate publicly the death of other people, right? Like it's just not considered like, it's considered uncouth, I would say. Yeah. So I scoured the internet <laughs> and kept trying to find these stories and I had a hard time. So I went to our AI friend, ChatGPT. Ooh. And I asked the question, quote, what are some situations where people were glad someone was murdered? And here's what the AI replied with, quote, as an AI language model, it is not appropriate or ethical to provide examples of situations where people were glad someone was murdered. (laughs) Celebrating or justifying the taking of a human life goes against fundamental principles of respect for human dignity and the value of human life. Yeah, yeah, Murder is a serious crime that should never be condoned or celebrated, (laughs) regardless of the circumstances. It is important to promote peace, justice, and nonviolent solutions to conflict. I felt like I was getting lectured. Sheesh. Yeah, it's judging you. You're on a list. I'm definitely on a list now. (laughs) (laughs) How elaborate is that? It's really, it's so funny. But it's also like, it's kind of gross because it's like this weird response of like the dignity of human. It's like, are we really that sad that Bin Laden's dead? Like, do we really right. think that all human yeah. life is really equally valuable? No, of course yeah. it's not. Yeah. It's, it's just like this weird response that, I don't know, it, it's tone deaf at the very least. That's but, okay. I, but I definitely, definitely am on a list now. So, so anyway, finding info on people in the world is glad it's dead. It's, it was kind of hard to do. But I did find two stories I thought were basically that, and they all had, they both had one centralized red flag, which was, don't be a dick. And if you are consistently a dick to enough people, expect people to kill you. So I'm not going to do both stories today. I'm going to do one of them, and I'm putting the other one in the back pocket to use another time. Uh, But I'm going to start with a story of a man named Ken Rex McElroy. Have you heard that name before? I know a story about this topic i don't know if it's the one that you're gonna do but i don't want to say anything so you just go okay it probably is okay it's a very famous story okay so ken was murdered in 1981 at the age of 47 and to say people were thrilled to see him go would be an understatement (laughs) so ken lived in skidmore missouri which is a small farming town that is only known for ken's murder and for what's called a punkin show not pumpkin punkin show which, I mean, I researched this a little bit. It's kind of like a festival. There's, like, tractor pulls. There's, it's, like a, it's like a county fair, but even, like, smaller and more isolated than that. Are there, are there pumpkins? Can you bring one? There's, there was no pictures of pumpkins. <laughs> it, it, looked like it, was a, it, it looks like a thing where you just go there and eat funnel cake and watch, like, tractor pulls, which I don't even know what a tractor pull is. I don't either, but I know what funnel cake is, and I like funnel cake. Funnel cake's great. 
What don't they call them elephant ears too? Yeah, I think in like New Jersey they call them that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So uh going back to Ken, sorry, sidetrack. Ken's childhood is basically what you would expect. He had 15 siblings, and so his parents oh did what Jesus they Christ. could. Yeah. They, these people hated protection. Oh, my <laughs> like God. They really, really hated protection. That's hilarious. But, like, obviously, when you have 16 children total, because Ken's one of them and he had 15 siblings, he kind of just raised himself. Yeah, totally. And and by virtue of raising yourself, you become kind of a small-time criminal. Yeah. Ken would have 21 charges brought up against him for basically just various – stealing of various things. And all 21 times, the charges were dropped because the main witness would be intimidated into not showing up for court and testifying against Ken. So that was yeah. his tactic. He would just do terrible things mm-hmm. and then intimidate the people that could actually put him in jail for doing those terrible things. Amazing. How many people are in the town? I don't know. I should look that up. I'm going to look that up right now. Population of Skidmore. So as of 2020, it was 1,400. So back then, probably 1,000, give or take. Oh, yeah, that's real small. And, like, most of them are his siblings. Yeah, most of yeah, he's related to most of them. Yeah. <laughs> like 10% of the city is the siblings. <laughs> so, uh, and, and, and also his progeny. So as Ken grew up, he was kind of a womanizer, which I don't even know how that works when you're this scummy. Mm-hmm. So Ken had 10 kids with various women. Ew. Yeah, all he does is steal shit. And he's having like, he won't want to have his kids. It's the weirdest thing. He ended up marrying a woman named Trina or Trina. I think it's Trina who she'll become important later on in the story. I read the following and decided to just quote it directly because I literally had no other way to paraphrase this description. This is describing Trina. Okay. Mm-hmm. quote they met when she was 12 years old he raped trina repeatedly <gasps> her parents initially opposed the relationship but after ken burned their house down and shot the family dog they begrudgingly agreed to the marriage end quote i think it's more begrudging what? that just throws me for a loop. like what are you talking about like oh my god who are these people it says I'm not, I'm not, it literally says they begrudgingly agreed to the marriage after he raped her, burned down their house, and shot the family dog, which will be a theme, by the way. Oh my God. Yeah. Begrudging. I can see, no. it, I, I can see them being begrudged by that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, that's a little, a little in- inconvenient. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so it's like the equivalent of like a traffic jam, is basically how they're describing it. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so Trina gets pregnant at 14 years old. Oh, my God. And at this time, mind you, Ken is already married to a woman named Alice. And then Trina comes and lives with Ken and Alice. And Ken marries Trina at this time because she's pregnant, and it is the only way he can avoid statutory rape charges. Oh so God. he tells his wife, honey, I'm sorry. <gasps> We got to bring this child into the marriage, and, and I need to divorce you and marry her so I don't go to jail for statutory raping this 14. Like, who are these people? Like, I doubt he said, I'm sorry. Yeah, he definitely did not say, I'm sorry. I'm just like, who are these people? Like, oh my God, it's awful. So, at one point, the two <laughs> girls, Alice and Trina, have to flee Ken's house. It's like right after she gives birth. I think it was like a week after she gives birth to their kid because he turns to like a violent, raging, alcoholic asshole. And Trina's like, let's leave, Alice. Let's run to my parents' house. So they leave Ken's house to go to Trina's parents' house. Not joking. Once again, Ken goes over there, burns the house down, and shoots the new family dog. Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, my God. This town sounds like everybody in it shared, like, a tooth. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, so there are various other stories here that if I were to go through them, it would literally take a lifetime. Basically, this guy was a total piece of shit. He, he, he treated shooting people, shooting people's dogs and burning houses down like it was a game of ding-dong ditch. Like, it was nothing yeah. to him. Like, he walked around... They would, they would constantly talk about how he would just drive around town and he had his arms slung out of the, the side of his truck holding a gun, like just waiting for a reason to shoot people. Like it was crazy. And nobody, and he never go to jail because he would just shoot you if you, if you, 
if you testified against him. Oh my god, people shouldn't have guns. I'm gonna say that again. Keep going. Yeah, I wrote down. I wrote down his prank, like his art, his way of pranking people, would basically just like shoot you in the knees. Like it was the craziest thing. <laughs> so there's these countless stories of people in town who had the exact same experience that Trina and her parents had, but. It all kind of escalates in 1980 when one of Ken's kids, like a young kid, like not an adult, right? Like he was still a child, got into an argument with someone at a grocery store in town owned by a 70 year old man named Ernest Bowcamp. Bowen Camp. Apparently, this kid stole something because, of course, he did because he's of Ken's he progeny. Yeah, he's not going like, to be a good kid. No. Yeah. Like, it, so, like I said, like these, these kids, like they're not doing Dennis the Menace type things. They're doing like Damien from the Omen type things. Yeah. And because his kid was also a piece of shit, Ken gets pissed off at this owner of this market, Ernest, and his wife, Lois. This is a 70 year old couple. Right. He's mad at them because his son saw something. This, this is a type of person <laughs> that I. I hate. <laughs> yes, this is awful. Shit. Yes. So he, he starts constantly threatening them. That's his attack. Like again, the guy doesn't have a job, right? All he does is right. shoot people in the knees. So at one point, he actually shoots Ernest in his store in the neck. Oh my god! This seventy-year-old man. Somehow he survives. He survives. And in this case, he actually was arrested and then released on bail. And being the person that he is, he immediately goes to a local tavern with his gun and starts openly threatening Ernest that I'm going to kill this guy. Like, you know, he just oh my God. really, really talking about this. Yeah. He, I wrote down, it was, it's hilarious because like, he's pissed that he shot Ernest in the neck, got arrested for it, and he's upset at Ernest about this turn of events. Right. I, it's crazy. How? There's no, the, I can't make any logic out of that. That makes no sense. Yeah, yeah. So the people at the tavern really didn't like this because, A, Ken has done this to a lot of people in town. Mm -hmm. He's just a horrible piece of shit. And then there's a sweet 70-year-old couple who owns a local market, and they basically decide one morning that the town is just going to come together at – I forgot what it was. It was like some meeting spot – and the goal was, let's just figure out what we're going to do about Ken. Apparently, the sheriff is there, too. Mm -hmm. And he's just, like, trying to, like, appease people. He's like, guys, don't get involved in this. Like, just whatever. So, he's – the sheriff's trying to chill people out, saying, like – Wink, wink. probably going to go to jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Like he's trying to – but he also doesn't do anything to stop anyone. He, like, drives out of town after this meeting. Mm -hmm. During the meeting that the town folks are having somewhere, Ken and his wife, Trina, go to the local tavern for some drinks. People at the meeting find out that Ken was there, and the citizens decide, let's all go to the tavern. Mm -hmm. From what I could gather, it wasn't obvious that Ken understood what was going on. Like, it seemed mm -hmm. like he was just kind of drinking, and then the bar just filled with people. But, like, nobody was, like, surrounding him or anything. It was just like, let's all just be there, you know? Right. So, Ken leaves the bar. He gets in his truck, and it is there that he is shot twice. Well, he... There's a lot of bullets flying, but he actually shot twice by two different caliber weapons. In total, 46 people witnessed the shooting, including Trina, who was in the truck with Ken when the firing started or the shooting mm -hmm. started. And Trina identifies a gunman, but was countered by 46 other people who said they didn't do it or they didn't see anybody who did. It is kind of now agreed upon that the person Trina identified is probably the person who started the shooting. Mm -hmm. It's assumed it's a guy named Del Clement and probably his brother who killed him. But it doesn't seem like they did it because Ken's a jerk. It kind of seems like they did it because it was a business move for them. So Del and his brother owned that tavern, that bar in town, the only bar in town. Mm -hmm. And apparently... Anytime Ken came into that bar, which he came in a lot, people left because nobody yeah. wanted to be around him because he's a jerk off. I bet. And, and so it wasn't thought of as like, oh, this was in retaliation for being the biggest jerk in town. It was like, no, I got to kill this guy because he's driving away my customers. I got I to like get rid yeah, of him. Yeah, because he's the biggest jerk in town. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Expo, expo facto. Yeah. I think I said that right. <laughs> so what, what's interesting is – a lot of these people, like these town folks, I mean, this happened in like 81, right? Yeah. 
a lot of these people like are dead nobody said anything <laughs> like, I love that. like on their deathbed so it was, it was presumed Dell's gonna like confess this like obvious obviously all these people died of psoriasis cirrhosis of the liver <laughs> so like it was a slow death so nobody was like being killed in car accidents but nobody said anything it was all assumed like Dell on his deathbed is like yeah whatever it was me sue me <laughs> nothing nothing nobody's talking about this i did read in one um in one it was like a forum where this guy who said he was like 12 years old at the time uh-huh. commented saying i was there my mom took me down there and we all know who did it and i know who did it and i'm also not like it was like i don't know it's like it's it's like the, the claim to fame in this town is <laughs> the killing of this one guy so nobody wants to talk about it yeah, because the DA wouldn't press charges. Yeah. The FBI actually investigated because the FBI was like, guys, we can't have vigilante justice. Like, somebody should do something about this. And still, nobody went to jail for it. Mm-hmm. Because it just seems like, in general, the entire town was happy that this guy was dead. It's funny. I read this part. This is so human. Ken, <laughs> Ken was buried, obviously. And his tombstone reads, this is incredible, quote, beloved Ken, brave, <laughs> fearless, compassionate. End quote. Yeah. And they left off the fucking child rapist and elder abuser part where he shot a 70 year old man in the neck and raped a 12 year old. It's just like, why? Yeah, he, was, he was none of those things. He was none like, of those why things. Why would you rate that? Yeah. You're totally right. Chappie, G- Chad GBT sitting there lecturing me on like the, the dignity of human life. It's like, <laughs> come on. Like, <laughs> so ridiculous. Trina, in her defense, she sued the city. I, I don't get this woman. It sounds like Ken was the worst thing that ever happened to her, but she like still wanted to like make something out of this. She sued the city and the sheriff for $5 million. Again, the town... Wait, no, this is Skidmore, Texas. I looked up as 1400 What's Skidmore, Missouri? Oh, my God, Taylor. What? Guess less? how many people are in Skidmore, Missouri as of 2021? 500. 225. <gasps> no. Dude, that means Ken and his family probably back then were legitimately 10 to 20% of the town. That's crazy. That's zillow it. Yeah, you you could probably be the richest person in Skidmore, Missouri. I yeah. Mean, I mean, is it even possible they have Zillow there? Skidmore. There's one house for sale for $49,000, two bedrooms, one bath, 681 square feet. Oh, God. It's broken. <laughs> <laughs> it's broken yeah this house this house is broken yes it is windows are broken it needs to be torn down oh my god wait let's see if they have condos and townhomes there yeah that's a tear down wow um yeah, there's nothing for rent you can't move there yeah it's like two it's like what one big street and then like a bunch of small streets it's very small wait i'm gonna yelp and see if they have a diner there i bet their diner's gotta be really good is that bar still open let's find out skidmore missouri <laughs> Google along with us, friends. Oh, wow. They have a place. It's called Good Time Charlie's. Nice. Let's look at the... They don't it has 97 website. stars I'm on their Facebook. Oh, it's Great closed. Great service. Waitress was so friendly and accommodating. Clean restaurant. Awesome tenderloins. Definitely going back. Tina loves it. Oh, but she oh, went no, there it's, four years ago. It's, it, it's sold. It's sold? Yeah, they, everything was just purchased in the restaurant. There's nothing left. The building is for sale. You can buy the building for fifty nine thousand dollars. Wow. Well, so okay, so factor all this that in when I tell you this that Trina sued the city for five million dollars. Oh my god, they don't have five, five million dollars. Like, what on earth are you thinking? <laughs> yeah. And eventually, they settled at seventeen thousand. So, <laughs> yeah, she ended up moving away. She ended up uh, getting remarried and dying at the age of fifty five, probably of like lung cancer, because of course. I don't mean to be like this, but we get the kind of people we're talking about here. So. Are they? Well, how 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 are the children? Ken's twelve children, mm-hmm. or ten? I don't know. Let's find out what happened to Ken's children. Ken, Rex, McElroy children. Uh, they're all, they all have to be on death row, probably, right? I mean, I can't imagine that there aren't a bunch of them in jail. Gosh, when good, with Good Time Charlie's being closed, like what else do they have there? nothing you just go there to die i'm sure there's other places you can go i mean my town's very small but it's still oh what um, place is called the pub jeff managed to locate one person is talking about jeff who's one of ken's kids 
Mm-hmm. I worked with him at uh, school for behavioral problems for children because of because of course he is an absolutely amazing man. He is smart, attractive, sweet, caring, and has a bigger heart than anyone I've ever met. He is patient, kind, and very. I mean, all right, maybe maybe they turn, some of them turned out okay. I mean, there's a lot of them. Some of them got turned out kind of okay. He taught me a lot about life. I mean. Janetta, are you a real person? Janetta yeah. Pedalinski, are you like for real? That sounds a little fake. You're not. You're not wrong. Yeah, I, I feel like you're like. Is it is it Jeff who's writing this? <laughs> 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 what is going? A fundraiser by Janetta. Oh my God, who the fuck is it? My 38 year old cousin was found dead today. His father passed away, and his mother is in a nursing home. She can't afford to have a funeral or clean the body. He's an only child. Please help if you can. Okay, man. Now I'm just getting sad. How do these people all know each other? It's weird how they just like combine forces and like, good lord. Anyways, that's um. It Ken looks awful. Oh, there's a picture of Ken with a dog. Please. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he probably took that dog out and summarily killed it right after the picture was taken. Wow. That's all. So far in the story, he killed two family dogs and burned down two family homes so like he's not doing good well so there's been other bad things in skidmore there's a boy in 2001 a 20 year old that disappeared and they can't they couldn't find him there's something weird in like a but possibly he was connected to a pedophile boy scout leader who was like being someone on the internet that he wasn't so that guy's gone and then the third thing happened in oh i think someone this is my recent someone cut a baby out of someone's womb and tried to steal it in skidmore really? yeah wait there's a website called the curse of skidmore oh god that's wild yeah that's skidmore's terrible. skidmore's like a haunted place it sounds like it is it doesn't seem good I kind of want to go there now. I know. We can buy the whole town. Did you see the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre where they try to buy the town? Yes. <laughs> like that. It, <laughs> that you would absolutely, there would absolutely be too many Confederate flags and you would get murdered. I would get murdered. You would be fine. I would maybe be fine, but I'd have to like hide my personality. Wow. Hold on. In, on October 16, 2000, Greg Dragoo beat and strangled his girlfriend, Wendy Gillenwater. On the day of her death, he beat her brutally, tied her to his truck, and dragged her up and down the road in Skidmore. Jesus, there's only like one road in Skidmore. That's terrible. And then in 2001, Branson Perry disappeared. He was 20 at the time of his disappearance. There are rumors that he was involved in methamphetamine. Of course. Of course he was involved in methamphetamine. (laughs) Then another person, Bobby Joe, was killed. That's That's the one who got her baby ripped out of her. Ugh. Oh, God, so terrible. Yeah, steal her, stole her baby because she faked a pregnancy. Well, happens, yeah. Like, I mean, all the time in the news, I feel like, like that's crazy. Look, anytime you fake a pregnancy, the story arc ends with you cutting a fetus out of a pregnant woman. Yeah. That's it doesn't it end goes. with you. I don't know. I don't know how else it could possibly end. Yeah, well, Jesse James was killed there. Really? Yeah. That's wow. Crazy. We need to go to Skidmore, Taylor. I'm afraid. What is going on there? I don't want to, like, I don't know. That's that's too much. It's too like much dairy. stuff. It's like dairy. It is like dairy. Yeah. Almost exactly. Ugh. Alrighty. Well, well, that was our story. Crazy. There was there was a lot of Googling on this show, on this episode. So we hope that you weren't driving when you were listening to it so that you could Google along. Um, with, but the, with my yeah. editing skills, you're never going to even know. Ooh, nice. Yeah, that's wild. I, I've heard that story before, and I love that just, like, people were like, no, this guy had to go. And at least they, like, there's enough sane people, at least a little bit in that town, to be like, we can't put up with this anymore, and he's a piece of shit. Celebrating or just find the taking of a human life goes against fundamental principles <laughs> of respect for human dignity and the value of human life. He had no respect for human life, you know? He was and shooting a, an solutions. old man. Yeah. Don't you lecture me, chat GPT. What a farce. Um, anyways, yeah, that's my story. That's crazy. Well, thank you. I'm glad that we talked about that. And I definitely want to hear the other one sometime that you yes. found. You um, will definitely know the other one. I will? Okay. 
Yeah, I'm but not gonna start Googling. Yeah. I don't want to be on the list that you're on, so I'm not gonna Google that. <sighs> so funny. Yeah, super fun. I'm excited that I went a little bit further back this time. I'm trying to find stuff that's like even further back. I got some stuff in the hopper that's like also like during like Catherine the Great American Revolution time, but I want to go further back more. So let me know if you have any ideas, anyone, because there's so many cool stories that happened. And if you know somebody that should be killed, let us know. One of my friends, she's from Virginia in, in college, and she, I think her grandpa was killed like by the town, and no one would ever tell them what happened. Was he a jerk off? He must have been. Like, she was like, her, like, her mom was like, I just want to know what happened to my dad, and the town was like, nope. <laughs> and we were like, why would anyone tell you? And she was like, she kind of like brushed it off, and we were like, what like what are you talking about like that makes no sense like i need to hear more about the story but like she didn't know anymore so i wonder what that one was but it does feel like a texas thing you know yeah like i could see that happening and for like most of history that was probably fine you know like the half of the mccoys kill each other all the time you know what i mean like people kill each other all the time like whatever i still think it's fine yeah so i feel like only recently they'd be like all right everyone i love the sheriff leaving town (laughs) Being like, I'm going to go to the store. I'll be back. I see nothing. I see, I'll be back nothing. in a few hours. Um, hope nothing bad happens while I'm gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's one way to remove all accountability for yourself is just it. <laughs> to leave. Good for him. Alrighty, Taylor. Well, that is our stories for today. I yeah. will go ahead oh do you want to give any shout outs or do anything uh no i just want to say thank you for everyone to follow, who's following us please continue to follow us um i'm posting snippets now on instagram that i learned how to make those are fun so share those and then far as we need to talk about actual advertising <laughs> i know cool. we will get we will we will we definitely need to get to that talk to your but business me. friends when you're in ireland yes all my friends are business people they yeah, all have, have briefcases you have a lot of business friends talk to them it's Jeff Dunn and Dana Sadak. In he has a business. Dana's a, a salesperson. What does she talk- know about podcast advertising? Talk to your business friends. I bet they know someone. Okay, Taylor. Yes. I'll talk to my yes. Sweet. Oh, well, thanks, Taylor. Thanks. Yep. Okay. Bye. I'm going to stop recording.